meantime, a closer look at some of the trends that are driving the market. I'm joined right now by David Dietz, Managing Principal, Senior Portfolio Strategist at PPAC Private Wealth Management. David, thank you so much for being with us. Um, the Fed's moves, or no moves, um, what do you think? Because these are the important telltales of what happens to everybody's money, right? I mean, people want to know what's going to happen. These bulls out here have high hopes. Absolutely. A lot of the run-up since October 27th was predicated on up to six rate cuts coming in 2024 because inflation is coming down so fast. I saw nothing in those minutes that were released today that would support that most bullish scenario, including a 70% chance of a rate cut in March. So to that extent, there's nothing to continue this big fourth quarter Search. On the other hand, the Fed kept all options open. They right. talked about interest rates being in a lower range come 2024. So I think we're still going to have a less hawkish Fed here in 2024 than we had certainly in 2023. And I think for adroit, skillful stock pickers, that means there's going to be opportunities going forward. Right. So um, you didn't necessarily see or hear anything that said March rate cut. Um, so I guess that we can pause on that idea, at least for this moment. In the meantime, I mean, you do have some strategies for investors for 2024. What's behind, before we get to your actual picks and sector and stock recommendations, what's the strategy? Yeah, okay. I, I, well, I think the key strategy is what did best in 2023 you should be cautious of and what are solid blue chip companies but didn't fare as well last year you should be, you should be warming up to. We also saw that historically dividend paying stocks, particularly those who can grow those dividends, outperform the overall market. That was not the case next year. But we think that there is a little bit of reversion to the mean. And so this might be the year, particularly with interest rates perhaps drifting down, that you want to take a renewed focus on dividend paying stocks. The final theme is we saw AI hope last year. It was a fantastic year. This is going to be the year that the tech companies have to show profits from AI. And there may be some disappointment there. That could be a further reason for people to look elsewhere. Right. And that was a part of the discussion at the end of the year. I mean, AI is so great. All right. Where's the money? Where's the revenue? Where, you know, where's the profit from it? And, you know, on the other hand, what, what, the detriment that could be caused by AI. So these were some of the topics, but people were looking for the bottom line when yeah, it came absolutely. to AI. Adobe was um, a perfect example where they thought that their Firefly was going to show all sorts of great profits. Right. They failed to increase their revenue outlook uh, 2004 versus 2003, and the stock's been selling off right, ever since. Right, right. Okay, so let's get to some um, picks and such here. Um, your big picture, I see you're, you're looking for names that maybe were outside of the Magnificent Seven or just the big ones. You have um, some energy names here, right? Tell me a little bit about that. So, you know, we love Exxon. Uh, you know, Exxon, of course, is one of your premier energy players. We've got an oil price that was recently, as the start of October, when there was a start of the Israeli-Gaza conflict, everyone yeah. said it's going through 100. Right now, we're back in the 70s and so forth. But we think that overlooks um, a potential resurging China. China. Right now, China's down in the dumps, but if they come back a little bit, there's all sorts of fiscal and monetary support there for the economy to revive. That's going to push energy prices up. And of course, you know, all the geopolitical conflicts. We've still got Ukraine raging. We've got things even getting worse yeah. in the Middle East, and that can push the energy prices up. Exxon's a great hedge on that. Meanwhile, you've got a stock which has a dividend that's twice the S&P 500, which is a dividend aristocrat, means it's grown it yeah. for 25 years in a row. What's not to like? Yeah. Without a doubt. Now, when you have some of these other players, Chevron, I know Occidental Petroleum, something you watch, um, Exxon's your number one. Do you like some of those other names as well? Well, generally, the uh, fossil fuel prices is going to drive it. But we like the majors because they're trading at a bit of a valuation premium yeah. versus the rest of the group because of their stability, lower debt. And so that means they can go into the market yeah. and acquire some of the cheaper places to build out their portfolio. That's exactly what Exxon did last right. year. They bought Denbury. They were closing in on Pioneer Natural Resources. That's going to be immediately accretive to earnings because they're just not getting the same multiple on yeah. their cash flow that Exxon will get once it's incorporated. Right in. Yeah, you also have Pfizer and, and Walgreens. Obviously, we're waiting on some earnings, too. Um, in that light, but tell me about Pfizer and Walgreens, two names you like. Pfizer is such a quality company. We, How would we have gotten through the pandemic without Pfizer's yeah. uh, COVID-19? Uh, and of course, now the good news is we're kind of 
we're hopefully past the pandemic. The bad news is that source of revenue for Pfizer uh, has gone away. But remember, this is a huge blue chip company that's closed in on about eight acquisitions in the last couple of years. They just closed in on CGen, $41 billion oncology uh, specialist. And what I like about uh, Pfizer, of course, is it's not just R&D. It's all about marketing. It's also about global reach in terms of getting those drugs out and so forth. Here's a stock that was at 62. Sure, they don't have the COVID-19 vaccine revenue coming in, but here's a stock that's under 30 now with about 6% dividend. I love the management t team led by Albert Burras. Um, and of course, oh, yeah, they've engaged great. in cost cutting. So there you go. Yeah, yeah he's pretty great. Um, so those are your picks, Exxon, Pfizer and Walgreens. I mean, when you think about some of the other themes, I mentioned Magnificent Seven. That was a theme. EVs, cannabis, people are still waiting. Um, hospitality, leisure, you have uh, what the consumer is doing with retail or restaurants, or how about cruise lines or airlines. I mean, these are all different areas of the market. Anything jump out at you in any of those? So I think our biggest risk next year is actually recession, not inflation, because as a prior guest said, the Fed yeah. is likely probably just to sit tight until there's a real reason to do something. And we just right. hope that re reason isn't some sort of a little mini financial disaster, which huh. uh, queers investor confidence and so forth. Um, and the reason why they might try this time to get ahead of it is because of that election. The last thing you want to do right. is be late adjusting yeah. interest rates and deliver a big fat recession to right. the party now in power is trying to uh, win their election in November. Right. Just a quick thought on small caps. I'm out of time, but both you and Eddie were both like um, small caps. Is there really a place here for small caps? Because people have been frustrated in that group. Yeah, absolutely. So they're down 17 percent from their all time high. Remember, yeah. just we're only one percent or so from the S&P 500 high. So there's more room to go. Historically, small caps okay. trade at a premium. They're actually at a discount in terms of valuation. So then we think that that could be a real good place to make uh, some alpha here in 2024. All right. Nice to see you. David Dietz, thank you so much. Always coming in person, PPAC Private Wealth Management, David Dietz.